So what's up guys, I was asked by one of my viewers in a comment on a previous video, hey, you have the 6505MH and you have the Piranha, let's see them dueled against each other in the lead context. So uh, what you heard me play just now was um, going through the lead channel with and without a Green Mile, so that's like a Tube Screamer substitute, right? Uh, the Green Mile by Moore is a very diverse pedal in that. With the tone knob and with the gain, uh, the gain when you bring the gain up about like about right here, you know, like about nine o'clock, that's when it starts to really kick in some balls. And so we have the we have the tone all the way up and the volume all the way up on the pedal. We're in the normal, not the hot, and then we have the gain, like I said, about like nine o'clock. So clean channel on the this is a 6505 MH I was playing, and then I'm playing now still. This is the clean channel without the crunch. And you can tell I have it just on the edge of breakup, right? So. Nice and jangly and crisp and clean. Throw a little bit of wet on there. Yeah, nice and clean. So that's the green channel on the 6505MH in the clean, non-crunch, but bright, engaged mode. That's when I go back to the humbucker and the bridge, it definitely starts to break up. This is the clean channel. So when I throw the, the pedal on, Definitely hear the pedal engaged. It's definitely modifying the frequency shelves, like the mid shelf and the low shelf, definitely are being changed. So we're running through a 4x12, a Marshall 4x12 with vintage Celestian 30s in there. I got an SM57 and an R140. Uh, MXL R40 ribbon mic. So they're right on the speaker, right on, right off set the speaker. So I'm gonna run that same cab in, in both the, uh, the MH and then the Piranha here. So we're in the MH. Let's go to the crunch channel in the MH. So that was a clean. Here's the green mile in the clean. Clean, green mile clean. Now let's go crunch. A little bit of a volume dip whenever you go from the clean channel to the green channel to the red channel. So we're definitely um, gaining. Uh, we're at about like level three on the gain, the pre-gain for this channel. Let's throw the pedal on.
Yeah, definitely when I hang out in that green crunch channel with a pedal on it, it feels really rich and solid. It feels very dynamic and it doesn't feel overly flubby and it doesn't feel overly shrilly. It feels right in the middle. So uh, we're gonna go to the red channel now. So we're gonna go from green, no pedal, crunch mode to red channel. Yeah, I switched to the neck pickup and it sounds good in there. It sounds like it's retaining all the high characteristics of the, of the neck. Let's go to single mode. We'll go from humbucker to single. So a little bit about the red channel here. Uh, I have the gain at one, not one o'clock as in level one. Here's the gain at zero, nothing, about half. And there's one o'clock, one, sorry, level one. Now I, I moved it up to about one and a half, almost two. And it starts to blossom in the low end. I really don't I really don't like how sometimes boosting this channel turns out so let's go let's bring the gain back down I mean on this amp you really don't need to take the gain over like level five level three is enough this is level three pretty uh, pretty intense right um, on my power amp section I have both the resonance and presonance at six, right? So they're both at six. Uh, my my EQ is uh, about like six six, in a six and a half, right? So six low, six mid, six and a half highs. Pretty good tone, right? In in level three. Still so back down to level one, and we'll boost this channel. We'll see what happens. Just the channel. Let's throw the pedal on. You hear the sound? Lost some of that neck pickup characteristic. Just turn the pedal off. Turn the pedal back on. Pedal off, next flip. 
So, so that's a really big deal for me, right? Is like the neck pickup has to sound good split and good sing, um, you know, humbucker. If the neck sounds flubby and flabby, I, I hate the amp or I'll hate the pedal. I just, or I'll hate the guitar. It's, it has to sound jingly and clean and crisp. And um, definitely on the red channel, uh, just by itself, it sounds jingly. <laughs> And that's more of like me being nitpicky and a little bit OCD over my sound, right? Like it has to sound great in the low, you know, in the... But when I go to the neck pickup, if it sounds, if it sounds good, I'm, I'm done. I'm out. I'll walk out of the guitar store. I can't handle it. All right, so that's this amp. This is 6505MH. Now, I'm just going to plug... my guitar straight from this amp into this amp, okay? And then my, my 4x12 cable is behind the, the amp, obviously, so. I just wanted to make sure I had the amp turned off so I don't blow my, my tube amp. All right, here we go, so. Goes right, Let's see. All right. I literally just have it sitting on top of the amp. Okay, so I, I, I spent all my warm-up time and playing time and my dialing tone time on the MH, so who knows what we're going to get now. So um, same guitar, same cabinet, switch the amp, same pedal too, so. And this amp is really loud, so I can't like just juice the volume. Unfortunately, it doesn't have like a low watt mode. So the guy asked me, like, compare lead tones with a pedal, same amp, same guitar, or same same guitar, same p cabinet with the pedal. So the thing about the Piranha, it's great amp. In fact, the lead channel on this amp is awesome. Doesn't suck at all. But like, that's kind of all you get. So let's just try to go from low, middle to high with the sounds. We're in a clean channel. I'll pull up the EQ. It does have that boxy sound to it. It's one of those things, because it's an AB amp, you have to bring up the gain. It, so it tries to act like a, uh, a tube amp, but it's kind of solid state in the ass end. So you got to bring up the gain. I'll try not to clip the audio levels. Okay, that's a decent crunch tone. Let's see where we can go with the EQ on it. I hate the EQ on it, to be honest. It sounds like it's quacky. That was the EQ all the way up full. Let's bring it down. See, I think they tried to do like the Black Star here, where there's like a DP, DSP controlled um, EQ sweep on this e on this EQ knob, and so I think here it's like American, and then up all the way up is like British. You hear all those mids? It's kind of barky, and in the middle I just I just don't like it. Oh yeah, that's where I like it. About like, I guess that's about eleven o'clock or ten o'clock. So this is the clean channel, you know, we'll call it clean. You know, here's... And throw the pedal on it. Here comes the pedal. See, this is the problem. For me, I'm not that good at this, but like... 
sometimes putting boost pedals on a solid state amp doesn't work as intended. No pedal. Okay, that's not bad. Brought the EQ up. Bring the EQ down. Okay, I can live with that. That EQ is like a nine, let's put it back at 10. Bring the gain down, pull the volume up. Yeah, I clipped, sorry about that. Still clipping. Yeah, this amp is really fucking loud. It's not a bad amp. If it was the only amp he had, the Piranha that is, if this was the only amp he had, it wouldn't be a bad deal, but you could do better by just getting the MH. You're gonna spend like 160 or $200 on the Piranha, show up the extra couple hundred bucks and get the MH, in my opinion. So that's the clean channel pedal. I, I hate it. Um, let's go to the, the lead channel. I know that sounds terrible to say. I had to pedal on. <laughs> Here's without the pedal. See how the mids come out when I sweep? Watch, I'll sweep the EQ. Halfway up. 75%. All the way up. Yeah, it gets really barky. Uh, this amp would be better if it had a, like, <laughs> if it had a low, middle, high setup or like dip switches so I could like shelf the low, shelf the high, shelf the middle, that kind of thing. As it stands, what they did with this amp with the DSP controlled EQ and the EQ knob, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. It's like, I feel like I don't get enough lows and enough enough highs. I don't I don't get I get too much mids. It's like it's hard for me to find a sweet spot. All right, let's try the pedal out. So this is an all the way up EQ. See now it starts to sing. I mean I don't have the pedal on. It's just the guitar. I'm pulling up the gain. Volume's about like one and a half. EQ at half there. I don't know, man. What do you think about that? I mean, I guess let's try the pedal out. So yeah, I mean, that's that's the comparison between these two amps. 
I feel like the, the MH does a lot. And, and like, don't think I shortchanged this amp. I mean, I went through the clean channel, the, the crunch channel. I brought the gain down, I brought the gain up. I put the pedal in front. I did everything I could. And then I went to the lead channel. I did the same thing. I fucked with the EQ up and down. And I, and I just, if, if like I said, if this is all the money you had, and this is all the amp you had. Now remember, this is pushing a 4x12 cabinet with an MXL R40 ribbon mic and an SM57, right? going through a focus right your sound may vary if you buy this little piranha and you buy the little eight inch crappy speaker that, that you can buy with it or whatever your sound may be drastically different right like i said we're pushing a 4x12 cabinet in the closet over here to my right here in this closet so i, I don't know man and so that's the thing right whenever whenever because i played these little amps in the guitar center on little shitty speakers a little little piranha speaker i think it's an eight inch or something or a 10 inch speaker that it comes with and i hated it hated it unfortunately i already owned the amp at that point so <laughs> i already had it and i pushed my 4x12 and I, and I like it it sounds okay i just i just gotta like wrestle the sound out of it man i gotta like mess with the eqs i gotta mess with the, the the mic positioning and all that stuff and and i try not to do any of that here you saw me switch between this amp and that amp i didn't cut the video off the whole time this camera's been running so i mean this is as live and as real as a comparison it gets there's no post-processing here i'm gonna literally you know pull this off the memory card, right into my video editing software, cut off the end, cut off the beginning where I walk and turn the camera on and turn the camera off, that kind of thing. And then that's gonna be the video. So I hope you like this video. If you like it, subscribe and you know, fucking like, throw me a like. Um, like I said, this is just a comparison between the MH and the uh, Piranha. If you wanna see a comparison between these two over here, or uh, the, uh, the, little, the little baby orange and then the big orange over there, you know, give me some likes. Tell me what you think. Do you, if you'd like to see this orange and this orange compared, that'd be awesome, I think. But you got to let me know if that's what you want. So that's this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll publish this one um, this week coming up. And hopefully the guy who uh, made the original comment will comment some more and tell me what he thinks. And let's open the dialogue on that. You know, I just compared the Piranha and the um, MH with a Tube Screamer pedal using the same cab and a very versatile guitar, this PRS SE Holcomb Burst um, 2017 Mark Holcomb guitar here with the Alfini Omega pickups with the nice pickup switching ability. So you tell me what you think, man. Do you like it? I personally love the MH. I'm all over the MH. It's like, that's my tone. I came in here actually yesterday night and for like the last week and a half, I've been playing in the living room with my little um, Line 6 Amplify TT, which is a great little liber living room amp if that's all you're gonna mess with in a living room, right? And then I came in here last night and I turned on my 6505 MH and I was blown away. Blown away. I was like, God, I don't know how you're gonna emulate that. Not even the Piranha, in my opinion, comes close to emulating the 65 MH. Just doesn't do it. Pushing that 4x12 cab in the closet, the Piranha doesn't even touch what the MH can do. I don't know if you can hear it over the internet, but here in these headphones, right? The, the low end, and these are just Skull Candy headphones. This isn't like, you know, Beats or fucking Bose headphones or anything like that, right? These are Skull Candy. I actually got these for like $25 on eBay brand new. You know, they're the Hesh number two version, the second version of the Hesh. Pushing that 4x12 cabinet in there with the two microphones just thumps the hell out of these headphones. I don't get that from the, MA, uh, from the Piranha. Pushing the same cap, right? The same cap, same cable, everything's the same. I don't feel that out of that. I only feel it out of the 6505 MH. And I think the reason why is because the power section controls with the resonance and the presence knobs. And of course, a full band EQ, you know, low, mid, high, instead of just a single dinky EQ knob with DSP settings, right? I don't even feel that out of my Amplify TT. It doesn't push the headphones. It doesn't give me that low end resonance. Emulate, which, when it, I'm actually using a patch that I've messed with on the TT that emulates this the 6505, you know, like the actual 5150 amp, right? 6505 is amazing. The best sounding amp I have, and to be perfectly honest, I'm selling my Orange and I'm selling my EVH. They're both on Reverb right now. They're both on Craigslist in my town, and, and probably this week coming up, I'll put them on eBay in my town. I live in Houston, Texas, so if you're interested in 6505, I'm sorry, the EVH you know, 5150 LBX, or if you're interested in the Orange uh, Jim Root, Give me a shout if it's a if it's a if it's a real offer I'll take it you know what I mean I'll ship anywhere in the U S twenty five dollars, um, but you got to make a real offer you know what I mean anyways so that's been these two amps and I really enjoy them both but I really love the sixty five hundred five more than anything else in this room honestly catch you guys later but I wanted to say one thing though before we bounce if anyone from PV is paying attention 
reissue the 6505MH with programmable MIDI savings, settings savings. So like four knob, four buttons on the front of the amp. Push in this button and you get settings that you saved. Push in this button, you get settings that you saved. All the way around, right? That way I can foot switch preset one, two, three, or four because that's a problem with having the shared volume like pre and post gate on the green channel because it's a crunch and a clean and that's a problem you have also sharing globally the power amp section presence and resonance knobs what I mean by that is bring the 6505 into the future into now into to today and give us MIDI foot switchable channels that are programmable and presetable that's the only thing you could possibly do to make this amp any bit better and if you did that that would be amazing because then I could with one button do MIDI changes between all my pedals my channels my resonance settings my EQ settings all that stuff one channel boom clean mode boom crunch mode boom lead mode boom more lead mode right that's been this video I hope you enjoyed it 6505 MH and Piranha which one did you like best rock on I'll catch you next time